Ladies and gents, I'm Rosuji Reaction, and this is the insane acceleration of top fuel dragster visualized by the channel Real Life Lore. Yeah, this is one of the few topics that I can really talk about, give reaction about. Uh, you know, I know a thing or two about when it comes to cars, bikes, vehicles. So yeah, top fuel dragsters. I hope we don't just talk about those, you know, uh, makeshift, uh, you know, uh, jet uh, jet engine p uh, put uh, that those weird dragsters with the gigantic tires in the backs that shoots flames outside. I, I hope we just don't talk about that, but also talk about your everyday cars, supercars, hypercars. So yeah, this is a real life floor video. It's gonna be fun. This kind of you know stats and things is his specialty, so it's gonna be fun video. Yeah, I think this is a bit unusual of him. I don't think he talks about you know cars or racing or anything related to that i've not come across any video like that but yeah this is gonna be fun i looked at quite a few real life lore videos already if you haven't seen them check out the cars it's a playlist i've for it i upload lots of videos in 24 hours so you might have missed some videos so check out the playlist there check out the playlist too like all these sarcastic production cgp gray cos gazard in a nutshell internet historian and yeah let's watch this one this video was made possible by auto tempest the website that lets you search all the other sites at once for your next car Go and check them out next by following the link down in the description. In the 1990s, the McLaren car company produced this incredible vehicle, yeah, the F1. At its time, it was the absolute pinnacle of performance in a production vehicle, and it had everything you'd ever want. A V12 engine that produced 671. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, you know, really small, I used to play an FS2. Two. This is way back. I don't remember all this picking McLaren F1 because that was the fastest car there. One horsepower, 705 newton meters of torque, a red line at 8,500 RPM, sick doors, a driver-centric seating position what in the middle, and this? a 0-60 to 60 <laughs> mile per hour time of only 3.2 seconds. Yeah. All of this would have cost you $815,000 back in 1992 to purchase brand new. Over one and a half million. 3.2 seconds, zero to 60. That might feel like not that much considering today's standard with two and a half seconds and things like that. But understand this, this is zero to 60. Like how fast a car is zero to 60. Now zero to 20 could be different. Zero to 10 could be different. So, you know, this car launches extremely fast. Then when it goes after 20, 30, it kind of go, goes slow compared to the other cars who goes to 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds. But off the line is damn quick, this car. Uh, you know, that the Top Gear did that episode uh, where they did the drag race between Bugatti Veyron and McLaren F1. Now Bugatti Veyron's uh, 0 to 60 is like 2.5 to 2.7 seconds. So you think that Bugatti Veyron would just, from the start, would just walk off. But that's not the case. Both were driven by, you know, uh, I think, I don't know which car was driven by who, but, you know, uh, McLaren F1 basically, I think Bugatti Veyron was driven by Stig, so that should do better. McLaren F1 was driven by, I think, uh, Hammond. And he's still, I think, you know, uh, when the McLaren F1 basically, you know, launched off, it launched quicker than Bugatti Veyron. At the, at the very start, it just walked off from the Bugatti Veyron and then Bugatti Veyron caught off. So at the start of the line, this is really quick. Dollars adjusted for inflation today. It was the fastest car of its time, and when put down on a drag strip, it could obliterate the quarter mile in just 10.8 seconds. Unfortunately for the McLaren F1, this quarter mile time is absolutely eclipsed by modern day supercars, and modern day supercars may as well be in a completely different ga- What you talking about? No, it's not. What the fuck? <laughs> First of all, Look, if he's talking about the top line supercars, the top line like Bugatti, Chiron, and uh, you know Ajera R's and things like that, then I understand because those are the top of the line, the fastest cars of the world, and obviously that would be easily McLaren F1. But if you're talking about your you know mid series or even high end performance supercars like Audi R8, Nissan GTRs, and things like that, then no. Th those are not in a whole another category and no, th th those cannot beat McLaren F1. What are you talking about? That is a misconception everybody has. I think Clarkson even touched on that in the Grand Tour episode, one of the Grand Tour episode, where people have this misconception. Obviously, these cars are more efficient, you know, have more horsepower, who are quicker in 0 to 60s and all over efficient in that way. But they are not faster in, in long distances, like quarter mile and even at the top speeds. 
McLaren F1 squadron mile, like he said, is at 11 seconds. I'm pretty sure R8, Nissan GTR, all of them are 11 and a half and plus seconds. So this cannot beat McLaren F1 in quarter mile, nor they can beat in top speed. None of these cars goes to 240 miles per hour. So no, this is the misconception everybody has that, you know, the technology goes so high, like how it happens in the computer technology. Like uh, in the 90s, whatever computer processor people had, that is nothing compared to the what we have today. So that's the mentality people carry over. Like surely that's the case with the cars. I mean, at the in some areas it is. Like efficiency, like I said, you know, handling, accuracy, all the technology that makes it the perfect car you know, the zero to 60s, but not when it comes to sheer power and top speed, because emissions and things, you have to put turbos in it, that lowers the engine size displacements, and that sacrifices, you know, top and raw power. So yeah, a car with a turbo, which has 500 horsepower, and a car, a car that doesn't have a turbo and has a 500 horsepower, the without turbo car, naturally aspirated car, will reach higher top speeds, basically, because the, those engines will rev higher. So there will be higher displacement engines. So McLaren F1 is not weak. People have this, mis even today, most of the cars that you put against McLaren F1, McLaren F1 will probably, in a drag race, would you know obliterate all of them. Very few top-end cars can defeat McLaren F1, like Bugattis and AJRs, like I said. And modern day supercars and modern day supercars may as well be in a completely different galaxy of their own when compared to the quarter mile times of top fuel dragsters. This is the raw acceleration uh, okay. of top fuel dragsters visualized. In order to appreciate just how unbelievably fast top fuel dragsters will accelerate. What the fuck? That's an infinity. Is it? In yeah, I can't even see it. No, that's a Toyota. Yeah, okay. Corvette, McLaren, is that, uh, okay, that's an F1. Nissan GTR, yeah. If you put, uh, you know, quick off the line cars and if you don't put Nissan GTR there, that's a crime. I can't even see probably. What is it? Is that Dodge? Yeah, Dodge Challenger, Hellcat probably. Audi R8, Ferrari, Tesla, yes. It's a new contender with electric power. Porsche, two Lamborghinis. Another Porsche 918, yeah, okay. Ferrari, La Ferrari. Again, McLaren P1, other McLaren, then Bugatti, Veyron, Chiron, Porsche, another McLaren, another Tesla. Okay, wait a minute. What? Where's Koenigsegg? Ah, all right. You really need to watch this demonstration first. In this animation, I've created a lineup of the most powerful production cars that have ever existed, and I'm going to simulate a virtual drag race between all of them using each of their best recorded quarter- Whether it's Top Gear, Grand Tour, or even Real Life Floor, everybody, I guess, ignores Koenigsegg. Mile times. In this race, we have everything from the Bugatti Chiron, the McLaren F1, a Tesla Model S, and some goofy stuff thrown in like a Toyota Corolla, because, well, of course, you know me, and some <laughs> hypothetical stuff like the next-gen Tesla Roadster, whose quarter-mile times are, as of yet, unverified. So, here we go. Three, two, one, race. <laughs> All right, so it's going to take a lot longer for the poor old Corolla to make it, so let's dive into this and see what happened in a bit more detail. After just two seconds into the race, there's already a lot of interesting things going on. The Tesla Roadster has already, hypothetically, surpassed 60 miles per hour, while the Porsche 918 Spyder is right about at 60 as well. After three seconds have passed, all of these cars have hit 60 miles per hour, except for the poor Toyota Corolla, of course. Going forward to the finish line, the first car that passes is the Tesla Roadster, which Elon Musk has claimed will be capable of doing it in a mere 8.8 .8 seconds. Again, like I said, quarter mile, Audi R8 is 11.5, so is Nissan GTR, while McLaren F1 is about 11 or less than 11, I don't know, I don't know which stats here he's using The here. first real vehicle that has actually been produced to pass the quarter mile is the Bugatti Chiro Sport, at a blisteringly quick 9.4 seconds while at 158 miles per hour. Not far behind it is the Porsche 918 Spyder at 9.7 seconds, followed by the McLaren P1 at 9.8 seconds, and the Bugatti Veyron Supersport and McLaren 720S each at 9.9 .9 seconds. Every other car competing in this race will finish somewhere between 10 and 11 seconds, except for the Toyota Corolla, which will take 17 and a half seconds to catch up. 
To put into perspective how slow that is, rewatch the race. When starting at a complete standstill, the Bugatti Chiron will pass the quarter mile finish line before the Toyota Corolla even hits 60 miles an hour. The acceleration is just absolutely. Mm. New McLaren Sun 20s and six cities and things like that. McLaren Senna, obviously. Apparently, they are faster in quarter miles. So it is kind of coming closer in that sense. But I don't know. Normal R8 and Nissan GTR, I'm pretty sure they are higher 11 and a half or some seconds in quarter miles. So I don't know how he's using stats here. But I don't know. Uh, maybe the new revamp version is a bit faster. I don't know. But still, even beyond quarter miles, I'm pretty sure McLaren F1 would just be faster. Since, you know, at higher speeds, it is faster and it has higher top speed, apparently. ...bonkers, but the difference between the Corolla and the Chiron is comparable to the difference between the Chiron and a top fuel dragster. Let's do this race again with the exact same cars, only this time include a dragster. Alright, three, two, one, race. And just like that, the dragster won in about four and a half seconds. Even with its fantastic numbers, the Tesla Roadster is barely even halfway down the track by the time the Dragster is blowing past the finish line at around 390 miles an hour. He should have put that, you know, that Nissan Patrol from the Grand Tour episode, which it raced with a nine, you know, 900 Porsche. Where is it? Oh, there you go. 900 Spider. Uh, they, you know, Hammond raced and that's walked past. It would be closer to here somewhere, I guess. You should have put that on here too. That is how insanely fast one of these things accelerates, but how does it do it? Well, mostly because Jet of engine. the beast of an engine these things have inside of them. A single top fuel dragster Hemi engine produces 11,000 horsepower. That's the equivalent of 16 Lamborghini Aventadors combined. When fully ignited and under full throttle, this engine will burn through over 11 gallons of fuel per second, which is about the same rate that a fully loaded Boeing 747 jet will consume jet fuel at, albeit at 25% less efficiency. If you assume that all of the equipment is paid off, the crew worked for free, and nothing actually blows up, the cost to run a top fuel dragster is over $1,000 a second. But overwhelming horsepower is just one part of the formula for speed. Top fuel dragsters are also extremely lightweight, extremely aerodynamic, and have incredible grip because of their unique tires, which are kept at incredibly low pressures in order to maximize grip. When the engine's torque is applied to them at launch, these low pressure tires will squat and the bottom of the tire will flatten out like this, which serves to increase their contact patch with the ground, which increases their grip and helps to pull the dragster forwards quicker during launches. The tires crinkling like this is a direct result of the driving force being applied to them more gradually, which makes the wheels spin less, which leads to better traction. And it's also just incredibly satisfying to watch happening in slow motion for Seriously, some reason. That is awesome. While under full throttle, the dragster will go from 0 to 100 miles an hour in just 0 0.8 seconds. That's this fast. After just 2.2 seconds, the dragster is already at 200 miles per hour and has only covered 350 feet of ground. This acceleration is so That is just ridiculously fast. God damn, I can't even imagine sitting in one of those things. The level of pressure that would be, the g-forces it would pull. Damn, you know, but that is scary as well because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of skill required to drive that thing and not spin off because just, uh, you know, a bit of flick of the wheel a bit weirdly and that's it. I think it would spin off immediately. So the skill required to, you know, drive this is just ridiculous. How many accidents happens at this kind of drag events? Because I've never seen one like this. But there must be some, you know, good enough number of accidents so violently brutal that it exerts a force of around 8 G's onto the driver, God which is damn. comparable to the G's experienced by First World War era fighter pilots during dogfighting maneuvers. Top fuel dragsters will accelerate quicker than just about anything else you can think of. They're quicker than jets, and they're even quicker than the space shuttle during blastoff. But to really put it into perspective for you, think about it like this. Imagine you're sitting in a $140,000 twin- Look, here's what I'm gonna think. Anything that you put a wheel on and use friction on the ground to move forward on the ground of vehicle, 
if it's faster than a jet plane top of you know just off the line you just achieved something that shouldn't be achieved in a way that's just marvel right there that's just awesome to see that like fa faster than the jet plane just you know quick off the line that is just ridiculous scary but ridiculous in turbo powered corvette z06 and over a mile up the road from you is a top fuel dragster which is staged and ready to launch down a quarter mile drag strip the moment you pass you've got the obvious advantage of having a flying start you slam down the gas and scream through the gears down the mile of road and you fly past the dragster sitting there at about 200 miles an hour the moment your corvette passes the dragster its light goes green the dragster starts and launches immediately after you pass it. You're continuing to accelerate hard in the Corvette, but within just three seconds after your pass, the dragster already catches up to you and passes before it ultimately... I was just visualizing that. You're, you know, sitting there on your dragster. Corvette goes past by you at 200 miles per hour. That's a f really fast. Just goes past by you and then you go and you still beat it. I'm trying to visualize that level of uh, instant acceleration. That's just ridiculous, man. That's scary. Finishes past the quarter mile before even you do. That's insane. But there was even one time back in 2015 during a race in Australia where both dragsters blew up their engines just a couple of seconds into the race and they still managed to finish their quarter mile times in the mid 10 seconds, which is faster than a whole bunch of cars from that animation <laughs> at the very beginning of the video, including, sadly, the Toyota Corolla. Now look, I feel really bad about bullying the poor Corolla like this. I love this car more than any other, but here's one more silly fact. If you placed a top fuel dragster side by side on the quarter mile drag strip with a 2018 Toyota Corolla and you race them, the dragster would reach the finish line four times quicker than the Corolla would make it. But it's okay. I no, it wouldn't. Because it cannot go more than once, then it, engines would be so hot. It has to, you know, basically heal a bit cool down a bit that's the thing you see you're comparing with all these production cars but these production cars can go i guess hundreds and hundreds even thousands of miles in one go top fuel dragsters can only do quarter miles and that's it they have to cool off then the corolla for other reasons and after searching on autotempest.com i saw that there were around 300 of them for sale right now in the united yeah, people, go to the description with the original video page link and from there click on the link uh, for the Auto Tempest and support this channel. This was a good video, man. So yeah, some of the cars like McLaren 7 Series and even the late 6 Series cars might be faster than McLaren F1 at quarter miles. Even that, I don't know. I'm not so sure about that. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure when it comes to Nissan GTR and Audi RX, they are 11 and a half seconds or more. I mean, you know... Uh, maybe somebody did it around 10 seconds, but that could have been just one-off thing. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's 11 and a half seconds and more. And McLaren F1's average uh, quarter mile is, like he said, about 11 or something. So, McLaren F1 at higher top speed, more than 0 to 60. After 0 to 60, McLaren F1 starts to get faster than any of your, your supercars and performance cars, whatever you have. But obviously, when you bring up top of the end cars... Like really high-end cars like Bugattis, Koenigseggs, uh, McLaren Senna, uh, you know, even the P1 up until I guess near 200 miles per hour, P1 would still be faster. But with the obviously with the longer route, which I don't know how you're gonna find, but with the longer route, McLaren F1 will eventually overtake it because it's 240 miles per hour. But McLaren F1 is like what 210 or something. So McLaren P1 is 210 or something, while F1 is 240. So yeah. That raw power, you know, older engines were faster because they didn't have to think about uh, emissions and things. They didn't have turbos. They are just big, gigantic engines. But yeah, nowadays engines are more efficient, more fuel efficient, uh, are more, you know, uh, quicker off the line, 0 to 60s, uh, have more technology that, you know, handles great doing the turns and things because world is not just straight road you need to understand that so if if you consider all of those factors yes current cars are much better than the older cars yeah all right people that was the insane acceleration of top fuel dragsters those dragsters are st stupidly ridiculous eight g's just thinking about it you know I'll, I'll vomit immediately i don't know if vomit would come out or not because i'll be accelerating that's that direction but yeah all right 
I'll see you next time.